I feel what citrus is Mandarin. Kishu Mandarin. I like mandarins. The little tangos. Mandarin. I like lemons an awful lot. I'm an old line naval man. The Washington Naval, which is what this valley has always grown the best. In valleys up and down California, growers are producing fresh citrus for consumers around the world. Maintaining a sustainable business takes more than sunshine and fertile soil. It takes the kind of commitment to research, technology, innovation, and collaboration found at one vital, well-respected industry resource, the Citrus Research Board. Well, the Citrus Research Board is, has been in existence for 50 years now, and uh, that's a real major accomplishment for an, in, an industry organization. Throughout the 50 years, the organization has been very effective in supporting research opportunities that the entire industry benefits from the small grower, the big grower, and even the guy in the middle. In celebration of this golden anniversary in the Golden State, here's a look back at what really happens when life gives you lemons. In 1968, the citrus growers decided to set up the marketing order, as we know today, as Citrus Research Board. And the Citrus Board was established to fund research to benefit the growers, educate the growers, and Article 4 spells out that the Citrus Research Board has to fund the Citrus Variety Improvement Program, which later in 77 became the CCPP. So the driving force behind the establishment of the CRB was the need to have a source of clean material for the citrus industry. The situation was very different 50 years ago. We were concerned with citrus tristeza virus. It's one strain is known as quick decline and it affects Washington navels or any type of sweet orange grafted onto sour orange rootstock. And 50 years ago, the industry was totally planted to sour orange rootstock. And so in the presence of the virus, you had total collapse, hence quick decline of whole entire groves. And so that was kind of the, the start of looking into pathogens uh, what's causing diseases and how we can control and manage different pathogens of citrus. Another very important achievement of the Citrus Research Board has been the registration of 2,4-D. It's a growth regulator and it's used to preserve fruit on the tree for a prolonged period of time before it would either drop off or it's ready to be picked. So you expand your marketing window by doing such and that has been one of the largest benefits which was single-handedly put together by the Citrus Research Board in getting it re-registered and the industry ponied up and made a, a substantial investment to which point we've been paid back for significantly. Our reliance upon the export markets is much higher now than it was in the 1970s when I started. And along with that went uh, some of the requirements that foreign uh, importers had on our fruit as far as chemical residues, pest presence, and protocols to avoid problems and allow our fruit into those countries. One of the big impacts of the Citrus Research Board has been this, the research they did on gibberellic acid 30 years ago that basically we use today on a regular basis to extend the longevity of our fruit to hit the right market. One of the most exciting things that, or projects that I really enjoy talking about is Michael Roos from UC Riverside. Um, irradiates budwood, which is basically speeding up the process of, of mutation that sunlight would do. And he brings those budwood here and we graft them onto trees and monitor them over several years. And if a tree produces fruit that has no seeds or low seeds, then he can create a whole line of citrus out of that that is low seeded, which is what the consumers want. 
Tangos are uh, marketed by many commercial growers under their own brand names. For example, Cutie Mandarins. But the successes of the past have inevitably given way to the challenges of today. It has dramatically changed from where it was just worrying about how to grow things and grow things better, pack things better, process things better, to now worrying about fending off a disease that'll wipe out an industry. Over the past decade, the Citrus Research Board has allocated nearly 75% of all research dollars to one monumental threat, Wong Long Bing. HLB is a deadly citrus disease, and it has spread very far, very fast in other places where it's been introduced. But by catching the infections early in these uh, backyard trees, and doing everything we can to prevent the spread of the disease and the Asian citrus psyllid. We can hold it at bay while other researchers figure out how to breed resistant trees, how to treat infected trees, and how to prevent the spread further. 400 for a while. To control HLB, the Citrus Research Board operates a biological control lab in Riverside, California. In 2018, the lab reared over a million beneficial insects to control the Asian citrus psyllid the vector that spreads HLB. In the beginning, they used to find up to 350 adult Asian citrus psyllid in two minutes. After they released it, after several years, now they are finding about 20 to 30 adult Asian citrus psyllid in the same two minutes time in the same place. You know, there's been a lot of work on early detection of the disease, of identifying the diseased plants as early as possible and allowing a way to remove plants before they show symptoms, before the disease really has a chance to spread. So I think that's something where the Citrus Research Board has been really innovative in terms of trying to identify those plants and remove them at the earliest possible moment. And we can kind of extend the period that we've got healthy, productive citrus throughout the state. It tells a beautiful story how the California citrus industry and the CRB have been looking forward for decades. They didn't wait for the crisis to arrive in the doorstep to be active. They built the first protective structure uh, at Linco for the CCPP in 1998. So we were, we, we were already protecting our uh, germplasm. The Citrus Colonial Protection Program, it's uh, the first program uh, of its kind in the whole world. Today, the California citrus industry is at a turning point. And if the past half century has taught us anything, it's that the quest for a successful tomorrow revolves around fact-based, innovative, ongoing research. My hopes for the future of the California industry is that we can maintain a real viable and dynamic industry going forward. You know, Florida has been impacted a lot by the disease cycle that's hit them. We're hoping to avoid that here in California and maintain a real viable, uh, dynamic industry that we have today. There's a new frontier with the use of molecular technology in studying plants and crops and pests and their interrelationships and tactics and methods for control. So that's what the future holds for us, I think, is utilization of the, the new technologies. As a grower, we have to continue to invest in our future. The issues that keep facing us continue to impact our bottom line. And by investing in our future, investing in research to be able to understand how to solve the problems, how to prevent devastating diseases like Wong Long Bing from affecting our industry, will give us a long-term return on our investment. I think it's important that we continue to re recognize and appreciate industry members, such as the committee members and the staff of the CRB, for all of their efforts continuing on for the past 50 years and hopefully in the next 50 years towards working within this industry solving the problems, all volunteer based. We dedicate our time and our effort to uh, these projects out of personal interest in many cases, but we also realize that the benefit in the long run is for the entire industry. Happy 50th! Citrus Research Board! Feliz aniversario por los 50 años! Happy 50th anniversary, CRB! Woo!